I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? I am not. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. Even a mod? Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of Le Debutante International. The cold look in her eyes speaks louder than words. She is not amused. It's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Oh, so you went and talked to my mommy, and now she's making me play with you. Is that it, lawman? And what's gonna happen if we don't? You gonna go and tell on us? You gonna let him talk to me like that, Titus? Let's see. <laughs> yeah. I guess I am, you big pussy. The old man sent word you'd be around again. That's the reason I'm being so forthcoming with you. Don't wear it out. But having Everard back you up like that did seem to have some effect. Do I have a shaker in my hand? Is this... is this a shaker? It's not a shaker. It's nothing. He's holding nothing. It is but an imitation. Am I wearing a little bow tie? Am I wearing a bow tie and doing this? Am I smiling? Do you see me smiling and shaking my little shaker? No. Do you know why? That's right, I'm the cafeteria manager! I'm glad we cleared that. Was there anything else? Play it calm. This man needs to understand you need a drink to help the community deal with police stuff. Even more reason for me not to serve you, sir. Was there anything else you needed, other than alcohol? husband? No, he's not. I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Where is this going, officer? Yes, but... I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. No. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. No, absolutely not. Are you a policeman or a nanny? They are not missing, sir. You know where they are. They're at home, smoking, giving the ladder of vices a chance. What? That's just... 
My daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jambrok. There's nothing to worry about. They're almost grown up now, anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. My youngest girl, Jolie, is just shy of 16. Jenny, she is turning 18 next month. But we shouldn't even be talking about them. Why do you need to know this? Haven't I repeatedly told you that they are not missing? That they are in Jamrock, safe and well, at some stupid party? There is no investigation here. I can tell you that. I don't mean to disrespect, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get like this. It's better to indulge him at this point. Nothing. Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain? Or your heraldic bird? Wonderful. The store is open. Just an ordinary war. Nothing to see here. Because this is no ordinary war, it is sublime. Look at it. The shadows. The colors. All the other wars on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. The uncontested pinnacle of warcraft. Color peeled from the very face of God. Oh, Wallfather. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. Cindy the Skull has all the necessary materials. Talk to her. Mm hmm. Sure. If you must. She appreciates your effort to curb the deviantry and laxness. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Bruta. Evening falls. The time has come to take the vow. The vow's testy, circulatory system. Fascism, Bruta. Many things, but it's mostly about trusting your gut. Who does your gut tell you is the source of Rivershaw's problems? Quit stalling, Bruta. We're talking about the weakest, worst, most insane thing. The weak link. Yes, them, but also worm. 
Women, men of war, you don't like them. They're insane. Their idiocy needs to be scrubbed off this world with rubbing alcohol. Woo men need to go back to the fucking kitchen. That's what fascism boils down to. The rest is also important. But the main thing is that woo men need to know their place. Many things, but it's mostly about trusting your gut. Who does your gut tell you is the source of Rivershaw's problems? Yes, worm, worm. That's what fascism boils down to. The r stomach truth. You're having a stomach truth. Because you've said the hard things that others won't say, the good things, you've said them many times. Okay, yes, let's call it that. Good thinking. That sounds much better. Traditionalism. You like the sound of that. You're going to keep your vues, right? Keep your vues, Brota. For the nation, smart. Best not to mention the women too often. That's why you're the head and I am the stomach. Of course you are, Bruta. Of course. A wink-shaped growl sounds from your ass. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? What for? What do you think I'm trying to paint here? A mural for a bear tomorrow? Why do you really need me? But boring. You're not using my lovely brush to spread boredom. Well, if it's for art, but what kind of art are we talking about? Sounds like you're just about to live out your self-pity, not make a statement. I can't have shit art on my conscience. Yeah, not gonna hold my breath, piggy. You look like you'd suck at uh, everything, really. That's pretty fucked up. Even for you, Pigo. You're a real sad sack. You know that? Go ahead then. Art it up. Just try not to hurt yourself. I'm no self-portraits. Oh, uh, but I'm all out of fuel oil. You know what you should be able to find in your government-issued vehicle? Red dyed heavy fuel oil. Are you kidding me? Fuel oil is so much cooler. No way you're disfiguring that beautiful wall with something as pedestrian as ordinary paint. My fuel oil is for my kinema. Use your own fuel if you are unable to contain your artistic impulses, but please, leave my kinema out of it. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11.
worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? For something odd, come to tell me to fuck up. The tear machine step your bottles clunk into the machine and the The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. There is a hollow ring as you kick the box. It sounds like it's mostly empty. Your toe hurts now. Your toe has suffered damage. It hurts. Cool. You really showed that mail collection box. He does not actually think it's cool. If anything, the lieutenant feels sorry for the poor box. He's leaning in to inspect the layers of graffito that deface it. Shelves full of biographies of famous people. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Indeed. Something about that book does seem to have spoken to you. Well, I hope it contains what you're looking for. It's all quackery, in other words. Finally, something to calm the angry spirits that have been plaguing you.
The very thought of this tea causes your muscles to relax and your mind to clear. You're more present and in control than you were a moment ago. Gendarmerie, you found me. His slender figure is backlit by city lights, its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. It was mine. My friends use it from time to time to visit me. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? Beautiful. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you, and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Wait. Suddenly you are digging things? takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. He's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. Who knows, detective? It's a mystery. Different, of course. Something so mysterious about the way he talks. Very. He's barely holding it together. It's all he can do to keep from bursting out in laughter. Come on, detective, let's go.
We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? You have acquired the hat. Keep it, officer. It looks good on you. You shouldn't be seeing him in an intimate setting. For some reason, you feel this man is your superior. Superior, but he's not in the command chain. His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. My name is Charles Villedron. I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sir Leclerc. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I'm here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Hanging? What a drag. He seems like a cultured gentleman. You should ask him about the finer things. Oh yes, my friend has a great eye for these things. He refuses to tell me where it came from. It's, um, it's a mystery. <laughs> I believe they call this type of frame industrial. It's very comfy. That's really all I can tell you about it. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. What do you mean, like in a play? Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Well done, detective. sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. Were you able to see anything from inside?
About what time was all this happening, approximately? Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Or maybe there is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the Moral Intern is joking or not. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't change. Doing one's job doesn't automatically make one anyone's bitch. Besides, there are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. The smile he gives you is straight off a campaign poster. The kind of smile focus group tested to appeal to the most gullible swathe of the electorate. Darlings, that 
can't be an official designation. Jamrock and other parts of the International Zone have been mercifully spared of Sir Le Clay's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. God, yes, sweet standardization, the backbone of rationality and commerce. Except that candidate members never become full members, do they? A chill runs down your spine as you envision a half dozen people in professional attire standing around a chair, awkwardly pretending to be waiting for a motor bus. It's neither funny nor creative. As though you weren't envious enough of the boy as is. A dead body we still need to get down, by the way. A baby is crying in the neighboring apartment.
Lizzie B. What an odd choice of words. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. The 15th Indo Tribe. Because there was. The 15th Indo tribe was comprised of eight kids from Forberg and North Jamrock, running from wild dogs in the valley, hiding scents under rocks and stealing clothes off clotheslines, and sometimes even the copper wiring of phone lines. You may have been one of them. This must be a childhood memory. The 15th Indo tribe was your Indo tribe, set to rule in Cylinder. The rest of the kids are dead now car accidents and drug overdoses. Only you remain. Excuse me? Frankly, detective, you are in a deranged state. I can't let you proceed without close supervision. In fact, under normal circumstances, I'd be duty-bound to report you. Take it as a token of good faith between our precincts that I haven't done so. That's good. Some you time? This is a police investigation, not a journey of self-discovery. You'll still have your evenings to yourself. You might. It's important not to let one's style interfere with their work. The lieutenant is pretty sure style is just a euphemism for nihilistic binge drinking. Is it not? Thank you.